Hi everyone, Sarah here. I have a project to share with you for the Not Too Shabby Shop. Here's the information. I will link it all down below. Um, don't forget to log in when you're buying your stamps to collect your reward points. Okay, so um, starting December 9th, um, the Not Too Shabby Shop and the design team are participating with the Winter Coffee Lovers Blog Hop. So, uh, Not Too Shabby Shop is a super sponsor. It's running from December 9th to the 16th, and you can participate by creating a project with a winter theme using coffee, tea, or hot cocoa. I'll have all the links down below for you to the Coffee Loving Card Makers blog, and you'll see all the information required, and all you do is link your project in with the blog hop. So there's many prizes to be won, including a $25 gift certificate for the Not Too Shabby Shop. And Jamie has created a special section in the shop for all the coffee-related stamps. So they'll be easier for you to find them. And there's also a special coupon code during the hop for 15% off your purchase. Just use the word COFFEE all in caps and you can get 15% off your order. Alright, so now on to my project. Um, I was creating a special Christmas card. Um, I decided to use this North Pole Gazette, Gazette <laughs> Christmas paper from Recollections. This is a new one this year that my mom picked up for me. Thank you, Mom! Um, super awesome black, off-white, and gold with glitter. It is just gorgeous. So, put that off to the side. I created my own envelope because it is a bigger card. Um, the card itself is five and a half by seven. Yeah, five and a half by seven is the card. Okay, so um, I just used a piece of paper from that, oh, peek for you, from that collection to make my envelope. And because I picked a darker color, I needed to do like a little label. So I just used these Gina Marie dies to make my label here. And this is watercolor paper because I use that throughout the card. So this is the envelope. Nothing special, just an envelope. And here is my card. I'm in love. So I used these Gerda Steiner design stamps, the coffee hedgehog and the hedgehog with a sign. And um, basically just stamped all my little guys. The only um, masking that I did was for the coffee cup. That's it. So I started, I drew a line down the middle and down the bottom. And I started with these guys and just worked my way up. And when I got to this point, I placed my coffee cup first, masked it, and then stamped him on top. So I do have the coloring process for you guys for this one. I used my ink tense, Derwent ink tense pencils, which I love, um, to color in all these hedgehogs and their scarves. I decided to stick with all red to match the theme of the paper and just love the way it turned out. I used all these extra stamps from some other stamps and I do have that in the process so you can see where they came from. Uh, let me bring it up close for you to take a look. I used some Wink of Stella on the coffee cup. And then on the words, I used the At You Spica uh, glitter pencil or pens that I actually won from Jeannie a long time ago. I love these things. <laughs> and then for their eyes and their noses, I used the Black Glaze gel pen also purchased from the Not Too Shabby Shop. Love this thing. It gives like a nice shine and some texture to it. So let me bring it up here so you can see the first little guy. You can see the shine in his nose. And because this one had his eyes closed, I just used a black pen to kind of darken up his eyes to kind of match these guys who had like the, the gel pen on their eyes. So super cute how they turned out. I love it. It's so adorable. So that's the outside. On the inside, I used some more of the patterned paper. I used another piece of the watercolor paper just to make sure that it all matched. And this stamp set, Have a Very Merry Christmas, is um, from the Neat and Tangled set, which I don't seem to have right here, but it's also in Jamie's shop. And from All of Us is from the other Neat and Tangled set here, which is Say Yes to Donuts, so I used that one there. So that's it. On the top, I did include just a little handmade envelope for a gift card because this is to give a gift to someone. So that is there. 
And that is it. Super cute copy winter theme card. My first one. Um, I will be sharing more throughout the hop, hopefully. Um, if you want to check out, I will put the link down below also to my blog, which is being resurrected for this hop. <laughs> so check it out. There may be some projects that I only post on the blog because I unfortunately don't have time to do videos for them also. All right, so please stay tuned for the coloring process. Okay, so I just want to share my panel before I start coloring. So I use Canson watercolor paper and I stamped using Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. It's kind of my go-to. Um, so the main stamp sets I used were the Gerda Steiner Coffee Hedgehog and Hedgehog with Sign. And the only um, masking, you can see the yellow, there's like a piece of post-it back there. The only masking I did was for the coffee cup. So I did draw a line in pencil straight up the middle and I drew a line across the bottom. And then um, I used my stamps and started with the middle two and worked my way out and then went up to the next level. And then for this one here, I put the coffee cup in first, then masked it and then stamped my last hedgehog on top. And then afterwards I picked these little tiny sentiments to fit inside of their signs. So um, the first one, the Enjoy, is here from the Greeting Farm Bru Mini Remix Beautiful. Brutiful. And the other two are from the Lawn Fawn Tiny Tag Sing. So I used the For You and Happy Holidays. I wanted to use Merry Wishes, but it went just too far, so it would have touched their hands. Okay, so just a quick peek at my pencils there. Again, they're the Derwent Ink Tense pencils that I'm using. I have my color chart that I take a look at when I'm picking my colors. Um, for the hedgehogs, I basically picked two colors. Um, Willow is the light color, and then Oak was the dark color that I used for the quills. Um, and I just kept this one just at uh, double speed for you, just so you can get an idea of how I use them. I've kind of been playing around and what I do is fill in some color and put a little bit more pressure in the darker areas that I want to look like they're shaded more. Now in some cases I will use two colors to go together to do some shading um, but with this one I just did it nice and easy with one color and using pressure to make it darker. So you can see for this one I left some white space in the middle of his face because I did want it to be a little bit lighter. Um, filled in the two sides and then put some pressure around the edges where the quills and the face meet. And then I use my water brush, water brush to blend it all out. I'm really liking these Derwent Inktense pencils. They are super fun and easy to use. And this is a great medium that I can travel with. Um, the markers, the uh, distress markers, I find that I need to put marker and then use the water brush right away. Whereas with this, I could actually color the whole image. So I did the one hedgehog just to show you guys. And now for these ones, I'm coloring a whole row first. And then I'll go back with the water brush. So for traveling, I could just color a whole bunch of images with the pencil crayons. And then... Um, use the water brush later if I didn't feel comfortable using the water brush wherever I was like if I was on a plane or something I don't know so um, I have purchased a travel um, pencil case that is able to fit all 72 pencil crayons into so that's gonna be good so I am pretty much same thing for all of these guys and then for the next section I am gonna speed it up just because it is very long coloring in this whole image, but I did still want to share it with you guys. Um, yeah, so I'll leave you with this part and I will be back.
Okay, so now onto the quills. I'm using the oak pencil and basically just scribbling in color over top of the quills. And then I'll be using the water brush to um, spread it out. Again, I wanted this image to look fairly watercolored and just playful. So I wasn't being like too particular about staying within the lines. Um, you'll see later I added more water after I was finished because I wanted to blend out the edges of their heads to kind of fill in the spaces. I didn't want it to look like the hedgehogs in the middle were just floating in air. So basically just taking the water brush and spreading the color out over the quills. And then later on, I will go back and kind of um, spread the color out a little bit more and lighten the edges of it. Now on to the red. I believe I used poppy red. Sorry, I didn't write it down, but um, that seems to be my favorite red that I go to right now for Christmas. So again, I am filling in the entire area with this one and then putting more pressure and darkening the pencil where I want it to be darker. So I did choose to do all of them in the same red color just because of the paper, the patterned paper that I was using. I didn't want it to look too busy. There's a lot of hedgehogs on there, so, you know. <laughs> and then you'll see once I get all the color down, then I start to um, pull it around with the water brush again.
Okay, so after I clean up the edges here, the last part that I need to finish on this is to add some shading into the little signs that the hedgehogs are holding. I didn't want it to look like they were just sitting there on the paper. I wanted them to have some depth. So I used the um, pumice stone distress ink distress marker um, just to add some shading to the edges and to the coffee cup and then I also did add some down to the bottom so that it didn't look like the hedgehogs were just standing in air. Then I added the black glitter with the at you spica pens and that is oh after that I added in their um, noses and their eyes with the black glaze gel pen. So thank you for um, watching if you've made it all the way through this. Um, don't forget to join in if you can. Leave a comment, subscribe, and have a great day.